Hey guys, I'm Drew. I'm Vera. And we are HPC Global Online Pastors. We're so glad that you joined us for today's message. We hope that it encourages you, builds your faith, and just makes your life better. Now watch this message, and we'll be right back. Today I want to talk to you about something that I hope lifts your spirits and changes possibly the way you view yourself. I'm going to be honest. I don't like it when I hear people say things that are self-deprecating like, well, you know, I'm just an old sinner. I understand that you're being humble, but understand that Paul said, behold, all things have become new. You're no longer that old person that you was. Say this with me. I am a spirit. I live in a body and I possess a soul, which tells me that my spirit man is the important part of me. My flesh, I have to, I have to still fight battles and win them over the, the lust of the flesh and the desires that I have in my flesh and my mind. You know, it, it, someone said, I can't help but think of things. Well, you can't help what goes through your mind, but you can help what stays there because the word says to cast down vain imaginations. And if you are believing anything that Satan says about you that is contrary to what the word of God says about you, don't. We've all done things in the past that we're not proud of. And quite frankly, we would love it if those particular incidents never happened. Has anybody had, had any incidents in your past you wish had never happened? But since we can't go back and undo what we've already done, at the very least, we hope that nobody ever remembers it and it's never talked about again. However, it always seems like about the time that we feel like that we're about to move on from our past, it gets brought up. Somebody will try to make us feel like we're subpar as a human and we're not good enough. What I want to remind you today is that when you are a new creature in Christ, your past cannot stop your future. When your past mistakes are brought up, you just remember because of the work of the cross, you're better than that. Our enemy is relentless in his attempts to keep us in the shadows of our mistakes. He wants us to believe that we're unworthy and that our worth is tied to the missteps of our past that we've made. I want to tell you today that this is a toxic mindset that will lead you to live in constant shame and self-doubt. Stopping you from walking into the fullness of the life that God has made for you and intends for you. Your true identity is not shaped by your past, but it is shaped by your relationship with Jesus. I'm going to say that again. I want you to get that. The, the, your true identity is not shaped by your past. It's not shaped by what your mama and granny taught you when you were a little boy or a little girl. But your true identity, I'm talking about the one that was talked about in the book of Psalms where you were knit together in your mama's womb before your daddy ever, ever knew what you looked like. I'm telling you, the one that God had intended for you to make an impact on this earth, I'm talking about that true identity that Jesus has a plan for you and that is made and comes to fruition in your relationship with Jesus. Through his grace and mercy, we're, we're given a, a new beginning. Come on, somebody. I said we're given a new beginning. How many like new things? We, we was in, in a, on a car lot yesterday. How many know that you can get in trouble on a car lot? But we opened up a, 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 a Mercedes, and the first thing I wanted to do is go... <laughs> New things are nice, right? The moment we accept Christ into our lives, we're given a fresh start. Our, our sins are forgiven and we're no longer defined by what we did. 
we're not only forgiven, but we're also cherished. We're defined by love. We're invited to walk boldly in his truth. Anytime you feel the weight of your past pull you back, remember and remind yourself that your worth is in God's eyes, not other people's eyes. God don't see us for what we've done. He sees us for who he created us to be. We're equipped for the the challenges that we face. We're empowered to overcome obstacles and we're capable of pursuing our God-given calling. So when the enemy tries to convince you otherwise and he tries to remind you of how bad you were, I want you to declare with confidence in your relationship with Jesus, I'm better than that. I'm better than that. I want you to say that out loud. Come on, somebody say, I'm better than that. You're better than what you did. Maybe you made some mistakes and maybe you're not happy with it, but I believe also that God will use your mess to bring a message to this world that you don't have to be stuck in where you were, but you can be better than that, not because of your goodness, because the Bible says our our righteousness is as filthy rags, but what I'm talking about, when I am hidden under that blood we sang about a while ago, when I'm washed by the blood, then I am no longer operating under the same circumstances or the same uh, uh, things that would inhibit me from being my best because I'm better than that in Christ. Somebody say it one more time. I'm better than that. I'm better than that because I follow Christ. Are you a Christ follower today? Are you looking for his steps? 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, like previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Because spiritual awakening brings what? New life. Understanding your identity is fundamental in accomplishing what God puts you on this earth to accomplish. When you accept Jesus, you're transformed. You're made new. Your new identity empowers you to rise above your past, to rise above the missteps, to rise above the shortcomings. We're not defined by our failures. We're defined by who we are in him when you believe this it enables you to reject negative self talk oh man I'm so stupid don't say that you have the mind of Christ we have a tendency when we get mad at ourselves to say things that we shouldn't say oh man I made that mistake oh Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm a failure. No, you're not a failure. Don't say that. Remember Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'm gonna take this moment. Back there in that bookstore, there's a book that absolutely revolutionized my life. It was written by a pastor in Chicago, Bill Winston. And it's called The Law of Confession. If you understand the power that your words have, your your life will be totally changed because when we decree a thing, you know, in this world today, I talked a little bit about this last Sunday and I'm not gonna go back there, but this world is catching on to that and we're talking about manifesting things and being positive and energy. I promise you, they're on the right track. They're just looking at the wrong source because there is power in your words. There is power in your energy, but it has to be the energy that you draw from your relationship with Jesus Christ if you want his will to be done because the things of this world will let you down and you will be disappointed in the outcome if you're operating on your energy. But when I understand who I am in Christ, I'm not a failure. I may make a mistake in my flesh, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. 
I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. When you start saying those things, you might make the biggest mistake. You just start saying, man, you are so smart. You, are, you got this. You know what? Most of you, most of us, I should say, that would talk down to ourselves if the same thing happened to someone else and they did the same thing, you would jump on the wagon and go, man, you got this, it's all right, don't worry about it. But because we do it, that self-talk gets negative and we start degrading ourselves. We're too hard on ourselves. I'm telling you, I have been on that bus for a long time and I'm working on it because greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Those of us that like things a certain way and we want to see things a certain way, the first people that we usually jump on is us. But I'm here to tell you today that I am free through the grace of God. You are free through the grace of God. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, believe this and it will enable you to reject negative self-talk and recognize that you are worthy of love and you are worthy of the purpose that you're on this earth to, to fulfill. Somebody say, I'm better than that. I'm better than that because I choose my crew carefully. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He who walks as a companion with wise men will be wise. But the companions of a conceited, dull-witted fool are fools themselves and will experience harm. The company you keep will influence the mindset of your behavior. Surround yourself with positive, honest, God-minded people and that will make you want to be better yourself. Be picky with your relationships. Be picky with your relationships. Just cause they got two feet and they got a nose on their face don't mean they're the guy or gal for you. Just cause they breathing. Oh, but I've been waiting so long. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Don't change keys because you'll not find it. I'm just everywhere up here. <laughs> I'm just in my own little world, but that's all right. <laughs> but my thing, my thing is, and we've all done it. I'm not downing you. I'm just telling you. I've made this mistake in the past, and so I don't want nobody else to make it because it is awful. God says, well, one, uh, uh, no, God don't say this. Man says that when, well, when one door closes, God will open another door. That's true, but it is hell in the hallway, y'all. So don't choose the wrong person. I'm not talking about just in a man, uh, a woman relationship. I'm talking about your friends. Don't get hooked up with the wrong coworker. They'll get you fired by association. If your close friends don't take you higher, they will inevitably take you lower. Surround yourself with those who inspire you to be better and that will hold you accountable in your spiritual journey. Somebody say, I'm better than that. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you're better than anybody else. I'm just saying you're better than, than, than allowing what the Word says, allowing a fool to take you down with them. Amen? I'm better than that, so I will pursue excellence in all that I do. Colossians 3.23 Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, whatever your task may be, work from the soul. That is, put in your very best effort as, someone, as something done for the Lord and not for man. We're called to pursue excellence in every area of our life, y'all. Y'all don't want to be excellent? You're being quiet now. I said we are called to be excellent in our life. Amen? Listen, being excellent is not being perfect. 
It's about recognizing your strengths, addressing your weaknesses, and being willing to work on self-improvement with enthusiasm. This means put forth your best effort at your job. Give your best effort in your relationships. Be the best Christian that you can be. Amen? When you pursue excellence, you honor God and reflect His character to this world. When we commit, commit to excellence, we're showing that we believe that we are indeed better than that. Better than mediocrity. Better than complacency. Just remember, your efforts matter. Somebody say, I'm better than that. The last thing today is I'm better than that, so I believe that God has a plan for my life. Jeremiah 29, 11, how many times have we read this scripture? But it's so true. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. God has a unique beautiful plan for you. That's why I said earlier, don't settle for just anybody that comes down the pike. God has a beautiful plan for your life. God has a beautiful response to the disaster that you may have faced in your life. God has a rebound for you that is greater. The word says, and this is the part in the last eight years that I have really had to say, God, help me grasp this. But God says in his word that your ending will be greater than how you begun. Your latter days will be greater than your former days. How can that happen? I'll tell you how that can happen. When you understand and realize that you're better than what has happened to you, you're better than the attack that's come upon your family. I am better than the death that, that Satan brought into my home. You know what? In, in, in June of 2016, when my wife of 27 years passed away, and then four months later, my son that was then... I don't know, 24, 25 years old, called me and said, Dad, they've, they've told me I have cancer. I went to my bedroom and I wasn't mad at God because of what had happened in June. I, I was hurt and I was, I was trying to figure it out, but I knew that we were better than what we had experienced. And I looked at God and I said, no way. Your word says by your stripes he is healed. And today he is in a church singing in Nashville because he's better than the cancer that tried to take him out. He's better and, 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 and so I'm not saying that we're better than anybody but God makes us worthy with his blood and you have the ability to say I'm better than the past life. I'm better than what Satan tried to take me down. What he tried to steal my joy with for all those years. I'm telling you God gives me strength. You're better than that. So don't settle for less. Look at your neighbor right now. I, I'm, I'm trying to stop doing this look at your neighbor stuff because I see so many things. That I hate that look at your neighbor stuff. But I love having y'all look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, your future is bright. <laughs> Trusting in God's plan, and I'm almost finished. Trusting in God's plan. Step confidently into your purpose. Know that you are called to live a life <laughs> that reflects your worth and your potential according to the words of Jesus. According to the work of Jesus. You think about this sinless king being put to death for my sinfulness and then he says just before he left he said my father's in my father's house there are many mansions and if it were not true I wouldn't tell you this but I'm going away to prepare a place for you you know why he said all that he knew that what he was about to accomplish on the cross would cover anything that you had done 
in your past. Paul said, if you'll confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Today, I want to leave you with a couple of statements and then I'm going to pray. You are better than your circumstances. And you are destined for greatness in Him. Somebody say, I'm better than that. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for your, your redemptive power. I thank you, Lord, for your strength and your mercy. God, I thank you that we have a Savior to rely on and trust in today. I thank you, Jesus, that you are king but you brought us into your family. You brought us into the rights that you paid for on the cross. You brought us into that through the work of the cross. And you've given us the authority to walk in your power. And you've given us the strength. And Lord, never do I ever want anybody to think that I'm arrogant and I'm not trying to preach arrogance because we can't do anything in our own, on our own and in our own strength. But Lord, I'm talking about the strength that you infuse those that are covered with your sweet, precious blood. I'm talking about those that make that decision to call you Lord and follow you as their Lord and Savior. I'm talking about those that choose you over anything else. Seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and all these things will be added. So Lord, in Jesus' name, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice today, whether they're in, on this campus physically or they're wherever they are joining us through the internet, I pray God that they would understand their worth. They would understand those mistakes that they made can be put away Lord, you said that when you save us, that our sin is cast so far away from us, it can't be remembered. And we know that the accuser is the only one that brings it back to us. And so we just take authority over that today and we speak life and freshness into every relationship with you today, God. And just like Job said, we could decree a thing and it would be established on this earth. I decree over those that have lost someone in this house. I decree that that grief stops, comes to an end, gets finished. There is a process of grief, grief and it needs to happen, but don't allow it to stay there. Don't allow the devil to tell you you have to live perpetually in that grief. That's not what, that's not what the Word says. Maybe you're here and you've been pronounced a horrible disease on your life. The word says you don't have to die from that. The Bible says it's once appointed unto man to die, but there's not a place that it says you have to die sick. God's word says that by his stripes you were healed. In Jesus' name. But first and foremost, above and more importantly than anything else, if you've never initiated a relationship with Jesus Christ by confessing and believing that Jesus is Lord, you need to do that. You need to call on Him as your Savior. And I'm going to invite you to pray with me right now. I'm just going to invite you to say these words. Now, if you just, if you just mimic these words, of course it doesn't do anything. But if you believe that Jesus is Lord, and you'll say these words. The Bible says, confess and believe and you shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone under the sound of my voice, say this with me, please. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Today, today I, make you I make you the Lord and Savior, the Lord and Savior of, my life, of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen.
That was such a good word, and we really do hope that it made your life better. Why don't you share it with a friend so it can encourage them too? Yes, and living a life with Jesus is so easy. The Bible says all you do is say with your mouth that you believe that Jesus is your Savior. You believe that in your heart, and you shall be saved. So I encourage you, say this prayer with me. Say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I believe you are my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that easy, and welcome to the family. Now we want to connect with you on our socials, and on our website, you'll find more ways that you can partner with us. Thank you for joining us, and now go out and dream big, because we serve a, a big, big God. God.